All right, ladies and gentlemen, we need to have a serious conversation about doxing and, uh, of course, the dangers. And by dangers of doxing, I'm not talking about uh, conservative commentators. I'm talking about the left. <laughs> I am sure by now that most of you have heard about Tim Pool getting swatted again, and I'm pretty sure most of you guys have heard about apparently Tim Pool uh, had one of his buildings shot at. Don't worry, we're not just going to be talking about doxing in this video. We're going to be talking about political violence, and of course the uh, the uh, the clip that people think uh, might have actually inspired this. But also at the same time, we're also going to go ahead and get this right out of the way. And let me just go ahead and kind of give you guys some advice really quick, some self defense tips. Uh, if you are in an area, if you live or if you are a homeowner, it might not be a good idea that you let people know exactly what it is that you have. Tim mentioned the fact that he had a Barrett 50 cal rifle, and of course he was trying to basically say to people, you might not want to come up here because this right here is gun-toting country. Uh, Tim, are you out of your freaking mind? It's not a good idea to say that. I understand that you feel safe in the compound, you feel safe with the castle claws and everything, but it's not a good idea to tell possible would-be people coming to your home exactly what you have. The whole point of defending your home is, uh, and I understand that maybe you might want to do this as a deterrent. The problem is, is that when you put something out there, people will be inclined to test you. I'm just, just figure I'd just go ahead and throw that out there. Now, as many of you may have heard, Tim was obviously doxxed. He's been doxxed on several occasions, and we're going to talk about doxxing first. Here's the thing about doxxing. I've always believed that doxing, of course, is the coward's way out, putting somebody's information out there, of course. I'm pretty sure a lot of you know about uh, the whole Taylor Lorenz lives of TikTok thing. Doxing itself is an extremely dangerous practice, as well as swatting. Uh, if you don't believe me, ask Andy Worski. His uh, dog got killed. I want to say it was Andy Worski. His dog, his dog was killed because Ian Miles Chiang decided he wanted to have him swatted. Swatted, of course, is an extremely dangerous activity because you're asking police officers to show up to somebody's home unannounced and said individual, for all you know, may pull out a firearm or something and uh, take it on a cop or a cop may take them down. Once again, per somebody got killed or somebody got hurt that did not need to be hurt. This is a very, very dirty practice. Of course, doxing is, of course, is just as dirty. I remember last time I heard of anybody getting doxxed outside of Taylor Lorenz was, uh, I want to say it was a dude from Black Rifle Coffee threatened to have Alex Jones doxxed over some comments that Alex Jones made which this guy obviously did not like. As a matter of fact, I did a video on that right there. But uh, I'll be leaving a video also in the description box, which of course is the Tim Cast segment where he brought the whole phone call conversation, which probably we'll talk about too, where somebody called him up with a very, very creepy message and apparently people were threatening his family. I don't really know about all that. All we have is like Tim's work at this moment in time. And of course, to go on top of this, the other video that I'm going to be putting in is kind of a, uh, let's just say it's kind of the clip that may have gotten this entire thing started because some people, of course, are looking at Jink Jr. from the Young Turks and his meltdown thinking that he may have actually called for this. We will be playing a part of that now. Now, you're probably asking why I not play the full clip, even though it's entertaining and it's funny to watch Jink have a meltdown. The reason why is because there were so many lies and so much bull crap in that video that it requires a separate project on its own. Don't worry, we will get to that right there before the end of the month. It's probably going to be one of the first actual projects on this channel. Fact of the matter is that you shouldn't be doxing people. However, if you were in the online sphere, if you were someone like myself and you were on YouTube and you're putting your information out there on the internet, guess what? There are people who are going to come after you. I mean, you should kind of know what the hell you're signing up for when you sign the contract. We had this phrase when I was in the Marines. Of course, USMC does not really stand for the United States Marine Corps. It signs for you sign the motherfucking contract or my personal favorite, Uncle Sam's misguided children or you suck as Miss Christmas. I just figured I would throw that out there. Fact of the matter is, is that if you're going to be in the online sphere, bad things are probably going to happen for you. They're probably going to happen to you. Now, me personally, I do not condone any of that. I do not condone any political violence. You need to go ahead and get that out of the way. You need to go ahead and say that way so that way YouTube will not find a way to uh, actually hurt this video here, which, by the way, needs to go viral. But the fact of the matter is this, where doxing is kind of sort of the coward's way out. You're basically, I'll put it this way here, you're basically fighting somebody without actually standing up and actually looking them dead in the face. You're giving out that person's information in the hope that the mob itself will come to said individual's home. This is another reason why I said that Tim should not be telling people what he owns inside the house as far as hardware or firearms is concerned, because part of the reason why you have those firearms is so that way you can defend your home. I know it sounds a little bit wonky or a little bit crazy the way I'm saying this, but you got to ask yourself a question. If somebody breaks into your home and they get put down as a result of breaking into your home, 
Wouldn't that be a much, much more effective message to people in the future who are just simply deterred and may go out there and try to go to other people's homes and do exactly what this said individual may or may not have done at Tim's home? I mean, just, just think about that. As a matter of fact, we're going to talk about the Castle Clause, too. But the thing is this right here, and speaking of the Castle Clause, there are some states, quite frankly, that have some of the most screwed-up self-defense laws in the world. For example, I want to say it's the state of New Jersey. The intruder has to actually enter the home, and you've actually got to go outside of your home to use said weapon on individual, which kind of defeats the point of a castle clause because, guess what? That means that said individual may know the law. You're outside with your shotgun or your pistol, and said individual is inside your home robbing your house, and yet you're not allowed to defend your property. Very, very screwed up law. Now, there is one thing that Tim can take solace in. West Virginia, we'll say a state like, say, Alabama or Tennessee or Texas or Florida or where I live at here in North Carolina, we have laws that, quite frankly, allow you to defend your home. We have those castle laws. And, of course, when it comes to terms of political violence, and we'll come back to this in the second half of the video, a lot of these left-wingers would not even try this because they, 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 I think they seem to understand at this point in time that all their shenanigans, all the stuff, the riots and crap, they're doing this in areas that, quite frankly, allow them to do that. Now, guys, let's talk a little bit about this clip of Jink. Of course, this goes all the way back to Jink getting upset with Tim's take on the whole Club Q uh, nightclub shooting, which, by the way, I've done two videos on, one on Gear Issue 33. Don't worry, I'll leave a link in the description box for you guys. I'll also leave a link to my Rumble channel as well because I did release an initial take on this. Now, the online left, they do this all the time. They love to incite violence. They love to make threats. They love to lose their shit like crazy. Very, very easily trigger people, very, very mentally stunted people, very, very emotionally. Let's just say that these people are not exactly of sound body and mind. I mean, the vast majority of mental illnesses are linked to members of the left, meaning the uh, people who vote Democrat, the people who side on the far left. A lot of people think that this entire thing stems back to Jinx Little Meltdown. I'm going to play this little 2 minutes and 45 seconds for you, and then we're going to come back to it. Of course, the takes that he has... We're going to refute them to refute to them in another um, another project, but I still think this right here is very very relevant because this right here is kind of sort of what the online left does. Let's be super clear. I mean, let's talk about wh what do we know about uh, the giant cases of pedophilia in this country. Number one is Catholic priests, one of the most conservative professions in America. Mm -hmm. Right wingers, Republicans, Catholic priests, and they're always constantly talking about. Oh yeah, a Catholic priest said that Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden couldn't have communion. Catholic priests are the they say. And meanwhile, they're the worst pedophiles in the entire country. And the Boy because Scouts, by the Boy way. Boy Scouts, they love the Boy Scouts. Right wing compared to the Girl Scouts. Nests of vipers and pedophiles and groomers, yep. okay? And the right wing's like, yes, I love how they molest the little kids like that. Go get them, Boy Scouts, go get them, priests. Tell me I'm wrong. You guys love the Boy Scouts and Catholic priests, you never criticize them. Well, okay, Jeffrey Epstein, oh, Donald Trump, get them, Boy Scouts, go get them, priests. And stop, and you don't care about their feelings. Now they're doing another talking point. All teachers are groomers and pedophiles. Why? Because the teachers union gives money to Democrats. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to destroy the teachers union. So well, Joe Rogan does it, Tim Pool does it, every Republican politician does it. And then I'm supposed to care about your God damned feelings as you encourage people to murder gay people day in and day out. He said it, he talked about how Club Q were groomers after they were fucked. After they were massacred, the right wing are monsters. And I'll tell you right now, the number one reason they constantly talk about pedophilia is because it's going through their heads. Nonstop, they're thinking about kids. I guarantee it. The reason Tim Pool wears a beanie is because he's trying to contain the pedophilia that's in his head. That's why he's always talking about it. He's seeing it everywhere. Why? Because he's projecting. Oh, Tim, did your feelings get hurt? You call everybody groomers and, pedoph and, and pedophiles, and you have no bliss because you dress like bums. Wow, you're so populist, okay? You're not populist. You're, all you are is glorified trash fluffers of the powerful. Ironically, Tim Pool is on his knees every single day servicing corporate executives. Oh yeah, everybody hate the little guy, hate the average man. I'm such a populist because I hate gay people and black people and brown people, right? Oh yeah, but corporate CEOs, I love you guys, have I done it all? 
No, you've never done enough. Get on your knees again, Tim, and Joe Rogan, and Crowder, and all of you. Get on your goddamn knees for corporate executives that you serve with this goddamn hatred. But don't look at the real problem in the country. All those guys. What's really funny to me is right there at the end, Jink mentions all those uh, all those wealthy people, which, by the way, is kind of generalized. Uh, it's kind of a generalized take here. What I'm saying, but still, at the same time, though, Jink doesn't really have any room to talk. I mean, this is the same guy who basically got on his knees and took uh, Buddy Rummer's money and uh, Jeffrey Katzenberg's money. So I think that Jink is kind of like uh, the pot calling the kettle black here. So, yeah, another man who had absolutely no facts, having a bit of a meltdown, kind of inciting other people around him to go out there and go do something. It's a possibility that this right here may have occurred. And, of course, in that little phone call that Tim had recorded, the person mentioned the G word. Of course, that right there being the word groomer. A part of this seems like a bit of a stretch to me. I think someone like Tim, especially given the amount that he's going through, at some point in time was eventually going to catch hell from somewhere or somebody was going to try at some point in time. Either way, though, we should not be surprised that they've gone to doxing. We should not be surprised that they've gone to political violence. This is who the left is, okay? Now, guys, here's the thing that I really and truly want to clamp down on in this video. And this right here is going to be the main ending to this video because this is actually the biggest point you have to understand. As I've said, doxing, this type of stuff right here is obviously the coward's way out. Something else, too, that you have to consider is the fact that the vast majority of these far-left rioters, where do they do this crap at? They do it mostly in cities. This is another reason why I kind of find this to be a little bit odd that somebody went out there. And I can kind of sort of hear somebody in the comment section saying, doesn't Tim live out in the middle of nowhere? Doesn't he live in a bit of a compound? Isn't it very, very hard to get to his home? Yes, I would agree with that. And obviously, we're waiting for more details to come out to actually make an educated guess on that or any type of real speculation. In the meantime, though, I gotta kinda take the man at his word. But the fact of the matter is this right here, the vast majority of left-wing rioters, the vast majority of Antifa types, they for the most part live in cities, okay? Now, let me ask you a question. Why in the world would they not leave cities, or is it smart for them to leave the cities? You see, inside those cities, they have massive amounts of gun control, meaning that people are kind of a, how do I say, um, kind of at a bit of a disadvantage. They can't actually fight back. And of course, the vast majority of left-wingers are, of course, fighting mostly other left-wingers. They're just fighting much, much more moderates. I mean, as I've said on multiple occasions, if you would ever have a civil war in this country, it would more than likely start in the cities themselves. And for the most part, it would be blue on blue violence because the vast majority of those people who live in those areas vote Democrat, not Republican, okay? Now, this right here is a thing that you have to consider here. If you are allowed to get away with such nonsense, what the hell do you think is going to happen when you go to rural, small-town America and you go to places where people are actually armed? I mean, anybody kind of thinking of the uh, good old-fashioned Colonel Troutman line from the original uh, First Blood movie? You guys think about that right there. You send that many men in, you better not forget a good supply of body bags. I'm just saying. I know it sounds hyperbolic. YouTube, don't ban me. I'm not advocating. I'm just saying that for every action, there is a greater, if not equal, reaction. Obviously, I don't know if Tim has got that in him, but you might want to think a lot longer about what it is you're doing before you decide to go to red and purple areas that are actually protected with castle laws because somebody will light you up if you try them. And this right here is where I'm going to end the video at. Guys, I have said this on multiple occasions. Anytime I hear the radical left run their mouth about civil war or anything like that, I just have to laugh at them. And the reason why is very simple. Most of these idiots, once they got outside of cities, would not last very long. Number two, you're enclosed to the cities. Now, let me ask you a serious question. I know I've said this on multiple occasions. I've asked questions. I know I've said, let me ask you a question. But let me ask you this right here. Where does your food supply come from? Where do your drinks come from? Where does every single life's necessity come from? It comes from a rural area. People who live in rural, small town area, the red areas, control about 99 freaking percent of the food supply in the country. And guess what? That said percentage has also got the vast majority of the hardware that you people constantly claim that you guys won't gotten rid of. Of course, that's rare being the gun control people. I just figured I would throw that out there. Guys, John Claymore here. I just want to do a quick conversation about doxing and political violence. And of course, of course, I don't advocate for it. I'm just simply saying that for every single action out there, there is an equal, if greater not, if equal or greater reaction to come. Once again, 
hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, leave a comment in the comment section. I'll see you guys later. <laughs>